writing code faster, managing IoT devices remotely, all things we would like, of course. When a few viewers wrote that they discovered a new kit in the block that promises a new view on these topics, I had to try it. What did I discover? Let's have a closer look. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Frequent viewers know that I like the simplicity of Docker on raspberries and the connectivity of the ESP chips. This is why we created IoTAppStory.com for the Arduino IDE and the ESP chips and IoT Stack for the raspberries, both with the goal to create simple and manageable environments. And they remember my video about MicroPython three years ago, where I thought MicroPython and CircuitPython would have a bigger footprint in the future because of their simplicity and ease of use. Adafruit invested a lot of effort and was successful with beginners, but commercial projects still mainly use C++. And IoT App Story is used in some niches where remote management is essential. And as far as I know, containers are currently not used in IoT devices. A small startup tries to combine these three concepts into one. The company and the product is called Toit, and its founders come from Google and Uber. So in this video we will test Toit to see if it is really the coolest kit in the block. Check out the status of the project, particularly the availability of examples and libraries. Compare it with the other two frameworks, the Arduino IDE with C++ and Micro or CircuitPython. And finally, you will get my verdict. Toit is the name of a new language and a cloud service to manage connected ESP32s. Because the cloud is not everybody's darling, I will focus on a subset called Jaguar. It works like Platform IO, standalone inside Visual Studio Code. The Toit language, by the way, is open source. The installation is hassle-free and fast. Just download a package and start the setup in a command prompt of Windows. After a few seconds, you can go to VSC and install the Toit extension. Of course, you have to install VSC if you do not already use Platform IO. Now we can start with the Hello World program. It's not very long, only two lines. We already see a difference to the Arduino IDE. There is no setup and loop only main. We must add a while statement to emulate setup and loop. Like Python, the Toit language uses indentions instead of curly braces. Not everybody's darling. Next question. How can we upload the code to our ESP32? To check if our Jaguar installation was successful, we type JAG, the abbreviation of Jaguar, and version. Yes, everything is okay. Now we have to flash the infrastructure code via serial to our ESP32. But why do we need an infrastructure? Arduino only needs the code, no infrastructure. Because the Toit crew wanted to make sure that the device does not completely crash, also not if our code crashes. So they created an operating system which always run on the ESP, very similar to MicroPython. The programs we write sit in containers and are managed by this OS. If the code in a container goes mad, the madness stays insulated in this container and the rest of the ESP still runs. You can remotely change your wrong program via Wi-Fi. No more unexpected reboots should occur. The containers are entirely separated and even do not share the memory or the libraries. Our ESP32 is now ready to run applications. I saved the Hello World example in a file. Because we will upload via Wi-Fi, we first have to connect our ESP32. This is done by Jack Scan. If we hit Enter, we are connected. Now we can type Jack Run Hello World dot toit. 
But unfortunately, nothing happens. No hello world. Fortunately, we can add a second terminal window to VSC. If we type Jack Monitor in this second terminal, we should get the printed output. But we only get a Wi-Fi timeout. If I use PuTTY connected to the ESP32 via serial, we see the Hello World message. Now we can go on. By the way, sometimes the console also worked in VSC. Obviously a bug. Let's hope it will be corrected in the next version. And now I show you a cool feature I have never seen before. Instead of run, I use Jack watch hello world dot toit. A nice touch by the way, commands are auto completed if you press the tab key. I now add a loop, a delay and print a variable to show you what happens. If I change the text in the program, it automatically compiles and if no errors are detected, uploads to the ESP32 in a fraction of a second, mind boggling fast. And if I make a mistake during programming, the compiler immediately shows it. How cool is that? But how is this possible? We all know that compiling and uploading takes ages in the Arduino IDE. This is possible because the TOIT language is optimized for microprocessors with limited resources and the compiler is optimized for that purpose too. No unnecessary things. That is why it's so fast. The upload, by the way, is not via serial, it's via Wi-Fi. Only debugging is via serial. So you can update your program remotely over the air. Exactly what we do with IoT App Story. Toit, like Python, uses so-called bytecode, which is interpreted by the infrastructure. This seems to be a standard way of doing things, but we know from MicroPython that the interpreters are slow compared to compiled C++. I think this should and could be changed in the future because the advantage of bytecode, its portability, is much smaller on IoT devices. We will later see how slow or fast Toit is compared to MicroPython on the same hardware. So far, we could wirelessly deploy our first program to an ESP32 and it ran. Not bad, but as usual on this channel, we want more. So let's try a sensor. In this respect, the Arduino definitely has an advantage and to a certain extent also CircuitPython. Both have a ton of tested libraries. Toit, for the moment, only has a small selection. I use the BME280, which uses an I2C interface. As a first step, we want to check if I2C works. Here is the code for an I2C scanner. It is straightforward and not very long. And really, it finds the sensor at address 76 hex. And here we see language elements we do not see in C++. The first is that we do not need to define the type of a variable. The only thing we have to do is to add a colon when we first use it. Like here where the variable found is declared. It gets its type automatically. Later we can use it in the loop. Extremely simple if we compare it to C++. And similar to Python. Toit can also format the print statements, by the way. Another small time saver. When iterating over a set, each member is automatically available through the it variable. And as with Python, we have to import libraries before we can start. Next question. How can we read the sensor? Here is the program. We initialize I2C, the sensor and in a loop, read and print the sensor values. That's all. The usual programming structures like if then else exist. In addition, Toit offers a cool command I never saw before. 100.repeat. In C++ this would be written like that. What is next if we can read sensors? Of course, we have to transfer them via MQTT and Wi-Fi to our server. This program is very similar to an Arduino sketch and also here it works. Frequent viewers know that I like BLE, but was not happy with the implementation on the ESP32. 
Toit also has some BLE examples, so let's check them out. I use my iPhone and NRF Connect to check if the ESP32 is visible. The first example creates a BLE device with the name Toit device and every 50 milliseconds transmits packets without content. No problem. The second example exposes a battery service. Unfortunately, it does not contain any information. Not very useful if you ask me. The third example shows manufacturer data, but there is not a lot of value here too. It seems that BLE is supported and works, but we need better examples like the transmission of a temperature or humidity of the BME 280. An ESP32 can hold and run different toit containers in parallel and even can communicate between them, similar to an RTOS. This will only work in one of the subsequent releases, but for sure it will be extremely useful. Without excellent and well-documented examples, starting with a new environment like Toit is tough. So I hope the team starts an effort and creates many meaningful examples and a few more libraries. Or it rewards developers to do so. What did I forget? Yes, of course, the benchmarks. Toit published three benchmarks and Casper, the founder, ran them for me, because I did not have the time. These are the results. Toit, on average, is 10 times faster than MicroPython on the same ESP32. Also here, we see that they built an infrastructure dedicated to microcontrollers. Maybe we will also get benchmarks that compare Toit with C++. Then we would know exactly how much speed we lose if we change from Arduino to Toit. The last test is essential. What happens if I reset or even un- or replug the ESP32? Nothing other than expected. The last program starts to run as with the Arduino IDE. A little slower than expected because the ESP32 has to connect to Wi-Fi first. So it's time to make the comparison. These are my criteria. Turnaround time from a code change till it runs on the board. Ease of programming. Need of resources. Speed of execution on a particular hardware. Stability of code. Availability of libraries. Community, including tutorials. Availability for different MCUs. And here is the result. Arduino still is the leading platform and the new Toit is last. I also included a subtotal where we only see the technical aspects. And here, Toit is first because of the unique features we saw before. So for me, it is clear where the development team around Casper has to put a lot of effort. Write tutorials and libraries. And sponsor projects, like Adafruit did with CircuitPython. The result also changes if you mainly do prototyping and small series. Then your priority is engineering hours and not hardware cost. One thing was not covered today, but might also be a deciding factor. Remote management. The Arduino IDE has IoT App Story and Toit has its cloud solution. So far I do not know of a remote management solution for the MicroPython world. Maybe you know? This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.